welcome to 2024. Man, I don't know about you, but 2023 was a crazy ride when it came to real estate here in Calgary, am I right? And so as we move into 2024, what is gonna happen? We've had five months of our benchmark price staying roughly the same. We are seeing our months of inventory dropping. We still got really low inventory. So what is this all shaping up to look like? Well, let's jump into the stats. Let's see what's happening. And we got some predictions here as well. So today's video is gonna be a little bit different. First half stats, second half is all our predictions. So as we always do, I wanna start with this chart first because this talks about our benchmark pricing, talks about the sales, and it talks about the inventory. So as you can see, the number of sales that we had in December was actually 13% higher than it was in 2022 for the month of December. So we had 1,366 sales happen in Calgary this last month. We had 1,248 new listings come on the market, which is actually 21% higher than we saw last year, which is a good thing. But the thing is we had that many more sales. So all of that inventory kind of got eaten up anyways. But what's really interesting is the benchmark price for the last five months. That benchmark price has actually stayed between $570,000 and $580,000. So we haven't seen a big increase uh, in our benchmark pricing in Calgary. So does that mean our market's over? Are we kind of flatlining? Mm, I don't think so. What is happening is properties that are above higher price ranges are a little bit slower and stuff in this range is really, really continuing and is really quick. Only areas that saw an increase in 2023, so more sales in that price range compared to uh, the last year in 2022 was between 200 dollars and $300,000 and between 700 dollars and a million. Everything else right in the middle here was a drop. So what does that mean? Uh, even, actually I shouldn't say that, oh, also a million dollars also increased as well. So what, what, what's happening here? Well, as prices have increased, we have slid into new price brackets for different types of properties. And as we are now more higher price properties for detached homes, for semi-detached, for townhouses, and for apartments, there are more apartments now selling because there's more affordability. So we saw between two to $300,000, you could actually see between the last three years, 2021, 2022, and 2023, that has increased each year as more products come available. So more one bedroom homes are gonna, or condos I should say, are gonna slide into that price range. Some of the two bedrooms are gonna be in there and slide into over 300. And then detached homes are sliding easily into over $700,000. I mean, we're seeing some kind of half duplex type stuff or uh, attached properties going for 550 now. So there's a different type of market that's kind of happening and everything's shifting up, but is that gonna continue this year? I, I personally do think it will. Um, and here is part of the reason why. Year to date, again, in the same price ranges, we only have the one price range that is not in a seller's market right now or for the last year. And that is above a million. Everything else from 700 and down is completely in a strong seller's market. And that hasn't changed. So much so that we actually dropped in our months of inventory. We ended in December dropping our months of inventory for the whole city down to 1.58 months of inventory. So if you think of what that actually means, if you got a roughly four or so weeks in a month, that's about six weeks of inventory. So today, everything that's on the market right now will or should be sold within six to seven weeks and new stuff should come on. So that means our city is still moving really, really quickly. And this is supposed to be winter. It's supposed to be a little bit slower. There is a lot of inventory that is still there and available for you. But at the end of the day, it's coming and going pretty quickly. The stuff that is priced really good, it's moving really fast. The stuff that is overpriced or is just not in good condition, it's gonna sit longer. So it's not gonna take six weeks. You easily can have stuff that's been on the market for a long time, unmotivated sellers, overpriced properties, properties that are just kind of crappy inside, to be honest, 
um, and for the pricing they're asking. And those ones could be sitting for a lot longer, so it kind of skews the stats a little bit, but ultimately we only have six to seven weeks of inventory sitting on our market. So what about all the months of inventory when it comes to all the different property types? Well, as you can see in this chart, detached homes, actually you can't see, it's really, really hard to see because it's really small, but let me tell you what happened. Detached homes actually stayed fairly stable in their months of inventory compared to November. Semi-detached and townhomes actually dropped about 0.5 months of inventory. So it actually got tighter of a market, uh, depending on which side of the coin you're on, a buyer or a seller. So it got better for the sellers uh, for detached, uh, semi-detached and townhomes. For apartments, on the other hand, that actually rose a little bit. So there's a little bit better for the buyer, but it's still a seller's market. All of these product types are easily under two and a half months of inventory, uh, which is the purple line on the bottom. So we have been in a seller's market. Where does that look like? From November last year, um, I think apartments were the only ones that in 2022 uh, were kind of in a buyer's or a balanced market. Everything else since then, we've been in a seller's market. So when it comes to sales per month, you can see on the chart here that we still are on the high end of the last 10 or 12 years or so of, of, of tracked on this chart here. And so when you actually look at the total number of sales that happened in 2023, we had about 27,400 roughly. So let's call it 27 and a half thousand roughly number of sales in 2023 for the whole year. Now this is down from 2022, but if we look at pre-COVID times, 2018, 19, even back into 2014, the numbers that we saw back then, this is still a lot higher than what we are used to because on average, it was still below 20,000 sales that we had per year. And this last year, we had over 27,000 sales per year. But the total number of sales for December was 1,248, which represented a 21% increase compared to last year, but that is down from November, which is kind of expected. It's Christmas. Tip things typically do slow down during this time frame. And then we come to our inventory. I mean, 2023 has been a year of talking about low inventory and December was no different. And in December, we ended up seeing the lowest number of inventory that we've seen over the last 10 or 11 years again. And that actually equates to when you add up all the numbers, when you're looking at year, the total years of inventory. So this is not saying this is how many homes are on the market. What I did is each month we have an inventory number. So I just took those numbers and added them all up just to kind of help you understand and see real numbers of what has happened in our market for the last number of years. So 2023, we had 36,832 total number of inventory, okay? 2022, we had 49,875. 21, we had 63,568. And 2020, we actually had 68,620. And then in 2019, we saw 79,908 total inventory. And then we go to 2018 and we saw 85,000 total number of inventory. I mean, these numbers are insane because we had 36,000 this last year and 2018 was 85,000 total inventory. So when we actually look at this chart right here, when we're talking back in past years, when we've had bloated inventory, this is what we talk about. This is what we mean when I say that. So when we actually look at these numbers, a lot of people are saying, well, it was a harder time in the market for Calgary. For sure, it totally was. There was way more inventory than sales. Prices were stagnant. It wasn't a good time uh, for sellers in the market back then. But it was a good time in 2014, 2013, and those numbers in 2014 was still 53,000 total inventory for 2014 compared to 36,000 in 2023. So when you look backwards, you can see really what's kind of happened at the picture that's being painted. Even though we've had five months of a benchmark price that's kind of been stable, we have dropping, like falling off a cliff type numbers when it comes to inventory. And what does it do? Supply and demand. And if there's not enough supply, and there's still the demand that's staying the same, and even if supply is dropping, 
well, that's still gonna push up prices. So what is 2024 gonna look like? And I'm gonna answer that question and our predictions right after this, but I wanna make sure if you want more stats, you want more information, you want detached, attached apartment stats, you want stats about Airdrie and Cochrane, you gotta go download the PDF guide, go get that because I ain't talking about that in this video because we're talking about our predictions now. So I've never been one to actually put out predictions, put out what I think is gonna happen in our market because uh, what if I'm wrong? Well, I don't care if I'm wrong. I am going to say some things. I'm going to be safe on some predictions. I'm gonna talk about some other things that are a little bit kind of wild, but at the end of the day, the market's gonna do what the market's gonna do. And for those that you comment that keep saying, stop pumping the market, stop, I don't have that much power. Let's be honest. Really at the end of the day, I'm looking at the trends. I'm looking at what's happening. I'm looking at what's going to happen as well that I can kind of foresee with our past experiences that we've had in real estate for the last almost 20 years now. And so if you were planning on making a move, making a sale, making a purchase, and you're needing someone to help you do that, literally anywhere across Canada, please let us know, because we've got connections everywhere. We can refer you, we can help you. So let's figure out these predictions and let's make sure you make good decisions in 2024. So three areas that we're gonna be talking about in our predictions, the first one is benchmark price. What is happening to the benchmark price here in Calgary? Then we're gonna talk about what are the hottest areas, property types, Types. And then thirdly, we're going to talk about I'm kind of calling it like the population shift. I don't know how else to say it, but what is happening with people who are local Calgarians, with people moving into Calgary, what are we going to see with those? So benchmark price, here's my prediction. In 2024, we are potentially going to see a 7% or larger growth in our benchmark price across the city. So if we are sitting at, uh, I think it's around the $570,000 mark right now, that would take us to about $609,000 or more by the end of the year. I know for sure we'll hit that number. It could come down again a little bit, but that's my gut is that we are going to see a 7% or more growth across the whole city. Now, not all product types are gonna be equal in this. Detached homes are gonna see probably a smaller growth than we're gonna see in apartments and townhomes because it's all about affordability right now. So I think we're gonna see a 12% or more growth in townhomes, which could put them in the rough range of 475,000 for their benchmark price. And for apartments, we could see a 13% or more growth, which would put that breaking a $360,000 benchmark price. I believe that we are gonna see a bigger growth in the lower affordable type properties compared to the higher priced properties. So the second area of our predictions today is all about the hottest areas of the city. I'm not talking about neighborhoods, I'm talking about product types. The hottest price points for detached homes are actually gonna be under 650,000. As the prices move, things go up, um, to find detached homes under a certain price range are gonna get harder and harder and harder. So properties and detached homes that are under 650,000, that is gonna be a hot area. Townhomes that are under 500,000 are going to also be a hot area. Now there are kind of villa townhomes, bungalows, uh, retirement type properties that are townhomes in that same category. Those ones that are 500 plus, they are gonna be a little bit slower than stuff that is under townhomes that are under 500. So townhomes under 500,000, that's gonna be a hot area this year. And lastly is apartment condos, but not all condos are made equal. So what I think is gonna happen this year is two bedroom condos that have good amenities, that have good parking, and they have storage are going to be kind of the hot items. If you look at Q3 of 2022, versus Q3 of 2023, we ended up seeing a 19.6% increase, so a $51,000 increase for two bedroom condos compared to only a $27,000 increase for one bedroom condos. So a 12% for one bedroom and a 19% for two bedrooms. So it already has been happening um, and I think that trend is gonna continue as we go into 2024. So our third prediction is what I'm calling population shift. I believe that there are many local Calgarians who are kind of not loving the change that Calgary is going through. 
and I feel like a lot of them are coming up for renewal of their mortgages and they're gonna have a decision to make. They're gonna have to decide, do I wanna renew my mortgage and do I wanna stay living in this property and do I wanna stay living in Calgary? And I do believe that there are going to be many people who are gonna say, this is too busy for me now. The city's getting too full. I don't like it. I like the smaller feel, the slower pace. And they're going to intentionally make a decision when it comes time for their mortgage renewal to get out of here. So what is that gonna do? Because in Canada in 2024, it's estimated that there's about 331 billion mortgages that are coming up in renewal. And in 2025, it's actually $352 billion of mortgages that are coming up for renewal. So what that means is that there's a lot of people who were locked in at really low interest rates and they're going to have to decide on can I afford, do I want to afford what this property is now? And they also have some equity. So they actually kind of may come across an extra anywhere from 30 to a hundred thousand dollars that they get to choose what they want to do with that equity. And I believe that people are going to start either staying or downsizing to a different product type because they're going to have a little bit of hard time affording what the value of their home is right now because it, it's not what they not the value that they had before right so they're going to have to either make that decision downsize renew and stay where they are or they're going to leave now is that going to slow our market down is that going to feel like there's this big exit of people leaving calgary because i know that's what you're thinking because that's what i thought and I don't think it's gonna be. There is still a really huge demand for people who are moving to Calgary. I mean, there was 95, I think the number was 95 or more thousand people that were net positive that moved to Calgary. So that's interprovincial for the year and only Q3 international numbers are that. So we've got a lot of people who are moving here. Now, not everyone's gonna stay, not everyone's gonna like put down roots forever here but that's a lot of people that are moving here. And so I don't think that's going to pause or slow down our market. If anything, it's going to potentially give more inventory for those people and just kind of give our market a little bit of breathing room. So I hope this is interesting and I wanna hear your thoughts. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I out to lunch or am I bang on? So go in the comments, don't trash me too bad. <laughs> I like you, you like me, we're friends. This is not a Barney song. You love me. But go in the comments, let me know your thoughts. And if you like this type of stuff, I know you're gonna love this video here.